All right, you guys, I appreciate you clicking on this video and I want to dive right into it because today we're talking about the Samsung Odyssey G58. This is a sweet monitor. Don't get me wrong whatsoever, but I do want to challenge Samsung a bit. I want to ask Samsung, was it a wise choice to move from VA, your primary panel technology, to IPS? And was it just to appease us gamers or was there a reason behind it? Well, I wanna talk about that today because this G50A has really morphed over its generations many times. And now Samsung is moving from VA to IPS. And is that a massive upgrade for you? If so, how did they do it? And how well does it stack up? That's what we're gonna talk about today, you guys. So follow me along this video as we test A to Z, all starting right now. So diving right in, you guys, we're gonna get into these specs. This is a 27 inch 1440p HDR 400, one millisecond response rate, FreeSync Premium and G-Sync gaming monitor. And to add to that, Samsung has taken a page out of LG's book and decided to upgrade this monitor with an IPS panel. The display itself is 350 peak nits of brightness and covers 99% of that sRGB scale. And for anyone wondering, it does have a flicker-free mode and an eye saver mode that will help out in those scenarios where you're staring at screens for a long period of time. Now, functionality-wise, the monitor and the stand itself does have full tilt, pan, swivel, and rotation. The aesthetic is identical to Samsung's G70A, which they traditionally do with their Odyssey lineup. The back is that spaceship style with those black clean lines and a pretty new age modern look. The stand itself is identical to pretty much every other new series Odyssey monitor out there. And their cable management is the same. It's a basic rubber band on the back of the stand that does seem to actually hold the cables in place. Now, if you're interested in IO on the back, it's pretty basic, pretty standard. You have your power input. You have your USB for firmware updates only. You do have a DisplayPort 1.4 and an HDMI 2.0. Last but not least, it does have that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So these are the specs that Samsung boasts. But of course, I never leave anything to chance. I always want to test every possible angle that I can. So let's start with a bit of the color accuracy testing some menus, some setup and calibration. So I do wanna mention here, you guys, that I did pull out that Spider X and started doing a bit of color calibration, brightness calibration. And what I noticed immediately was that the monitor was vastly off in its 350 peak nits of brightness. I actually saw 502 peak nits of brightness on this guy. Now that doesn't mean that's safe, or healthy for the monitor all the time. In fact, Spider X had me drop it down to about 220 peak nits of brightness, and that's continuous use with my room settings. After doing so, the calibration looked great. In fact, under sRGB, it did scale at 99% of the sRGB. We do see 75% of the NTSC, 79% of the Adobe RGB, and a pretty measly 81% of the DCI-P3 color scale. But it did score really high in brightness and in fact hit the sRGB scale that they do market. So that is a good thing. But I want to move on to the uniformity test here because that's super important. When you start to downgrade things on a monitor, things like uniformity matter because the lighting panels are usually the first things that are downgraded. So this compared to the G70A, there's no full array dimming on this. Testing uniformity, I tested different brightness levels. No matter which one I was on, there was still a bit of non-uniformity around the corners and edges of the display. The center seemed to do really, really well, but those corners and edges was a bit rough. So what I did wanna test was if there was any backlight bleed whatsoever. So I took a black backdrop and I used the mouse as a way to identify if there was any backlight bleed. And then I look at the edges and corners. And what I notice is the G50A is actually doing a very good job of not having backlight bleed. And even though it's not extremely uniform in its gray uniformity, the backlight bleed in this scenario is vastly better than some other monitors that I've tested. So let's move on to the menus here, you guys. And, and I'm not gonna be so in depth that this is boring, but I will give you the cliff notes of what I found here. First thing to know, when you get this monitor and you wanna calibrate everything, turn the adaptive sync 
off. That adaptive sync locks down most of your menus and doesn't allow you to tune things like pixel response rate, refresh rate, low input lag, things like that. So turn it off for the time being because when you do finally turn on that adaptive sync, it locks everything in place. This monitor actually has a very good amount of calibration tools that you can use. There's a full six axis color calibration, brightness, contrast, sharpness. It does have some gaming modes like black level adjust, pixel response rate adjust, and many, many more that you can go in and tune and calibrate. And one of my favorites is the fact it offers a low input lag feature just in case your PC or console doesn't offer that. But that's all in SDR. What happens when you switch over to HDR on console or on PC? It's actually not all bad. There's still a lot of menus available and you can do a full color calibration while you're in HDR. In fact, you can still tune your brightness, contrast, and sharpness while in HDR. Now, one of the biggest things that I noticed while in HDR is the fact that you cannot adjust your black level. And that to me, it's a bit of a pain, but we'll get into that a bit more later. Now, the last important fact I'll mention is under the system tab within the settings menu on the monitor, there is a setting called PC AV mode. If you're struggling to achieve certain refresh rates on console or you're having black screen flicker issues, you want to use this PC AV mode to change to the one that works for you. The other black screen flicker issues that I'm aware of, a good display port cable will fix. Put your questions down below. Now we're gonna move into the motion settings with Blur Busters where we get to test that full 165 Hertz and the pixel response rate and how well it handles in synthetic form. So we're gonna start with just the basics here and as we pause the first time, what we notice, we actually notice that the top frame here has a bit of overshoot and ghosting. And I'm on the factory setting here. I'm on just standard pixel response rate and 165 Hertz refresh rate. That second line is holding extremely solid, which we should expect. And the lowest is holding even more solid. Now, this is where things get a bit interesting. We have on the bottom your higher refresh rate, top your lower refresh rate with a world motion blur testing. The bottom frame is actually looking a bit blurred and that's what we saw in the previous test. We're still on the same settings here. So I'm hoping in the pixel response rate test, we can clean this up a bit. It's not all bad, but what you do notice is a bit of just blurriness and smearing on the display itself. You can't really make out the images very crisp like you can on the top. But again, synthetic benchmarks are not always a telltale sign that these monitors are gonna do poor in game. So let's test those pixel response rates right here, starting with the lowest, and that is going to be standard. So low, medium, high refresh rates here, 165 Hertz on the standard pixel response rate. And that top one, not quite sure what it's doing. It's kind of refreshing too fast, but too slow at the same time. It really needs to be dialed in here to give us some good pixel response rate and crisp lines on these UFOs. That second one, we're seeing a bit of overshoot as well. While on the bottom, it's a tinge, just a slight bit of that yellow, overshooting, kind of switching faster than it should. So I wanna crank it up a notch because we're gonna to go to the faster setting and this should clean up quite a bit about what's going on here. You know, and as we pause, we see almost the same thing as the standard. When we move up to fast, there's almost no change. There's maybe slightly less ghosting in that highest refresh rate, the top bar here, but your medium and low settings are almost identical to the previous test. Now, I do have to point out, I'm breaking this down frame by frame, and I've seen much worse than this on other displays. But if we compare this to something like the CRG5 or some of the other monitors that Samsung has on the market, the G7, both VA panels, or even the G70A, I don't know that this fully stacks up to those guys, but I do wanna test out their faster and their MBR technologies to see if those are where we really need to sit when it comes to this monitor. Boom, and here we are, the extreme setting, their highest in pixel response rate. I'm excited to see what happens here. So we go ahead and zoom in and we give a pause. And this is a bit rough, you guys. Like I have to say the extreme setting here is very poor. As you notice, even as you're watching without me pausing or slowing it down, 
you'll notice that there's a lot of artifacting, trailing artifacts on these UFOs. You see that trace image left, uh, quite a bit of blue pixel kind of remaining while the others are refreshing fast. This doesn't bode well for that extreme setting. And honestly, in most cases, the extreme setting is not that great anyways, but this is poor. High, medium, and low, we're getting a lot of artifacting. So we want to test that motion blur reduction on this monitor. And I do want to let you guys know there is going to be a strobe effect here. So look away if that concerns you. But we're going to zoom in. That MBR is on. I'm on the motion blur reduction test from Blur Busters. And we're going to go ahead and pause. We're getting caught up here. It's actually not looking so great for the Samsung and their MBR testing. We have three images on this UFO. The back, center, and right image are all kind of mushing together. Like even their MBR technology doesn't fully shut off the panel. There's still a bit of pixel retention while the new pixel is, or new frame is actually being inserted. So it's actually not, it's not holding together as, as well as I would hope. So what we have for their pixel response rates are standard, faster, and extreme. I would highly recommend that you use the faster. Synthetic benchmarks are not always the earmark of a good performing monitor in game. So I'm not gonna be too concerned here. I do wanna get into some gameplay. So let's jump in you guys. I have a few games starting out with, of course, the favorite, Warzone, but stay tuned because there are some new games coming up that you may not have seen me test before that are ever so popular. So let's jump in you guys. So jumping in, you guys, a few things that are notable about this monitor. It's G-Sync, and I'm using a 3090. Just right off the bat, the color, the contrast is all really good. The motion handling is fantastic. But I do have to point out that from off-axis viewing angles, it can get a bit hazy, and you can almost spot that backlight bleed just a little bit. But let's get in and break down some of this Warzone gameplay. So the clarity at 1440p is fantastic, you guys. At long distances, like I am here, aiming out this window while there's multiple people shooting back at me, I'm still able to make out the characters, the foliage around me, the buildings, people peeking through windows. And with 1440p, that's always a good thing you get. Now a bit of fast paced motion here as this guy comes popping through the window. He thinks he's gonna surprise me. I get a little hip fire into him. And as we pause here, we do see a bit of double image, kind of like we saw in the synthetic benchmarks on Blur Busters. I'm moving pretty quick and so is he. So, you know, you can expect to see a minimal amount of motion blur as you're playing fast paced games, just like Warzone. Now in that same game, I did make it to final circle and we we're the last two teams here. And I think I'm being sneaky by sneaking around the building, going up this rope here. I think I'm gonna get this guy by surprise. And unfortunately, that's just not what happens. I catch it too late and I uh, come up on him and he tears into me. But as I do that, I'm gonna pause. And I pause as I get my bearings and I'm aiming down sights and I actually do manage to crack this guy. And even though there's gas around me and you can see the blood going around, it's pretty painful to watch, I'm going down, I'm still making out a good character. Now, there was some motion blur along the way, but to the naked eye, I didn't really notice that. I had to slow it down and go frame by frame to really see it. But who knows, maybe we can get some more motion testing out of Vanguard here instead of Warzone. So I pop into the game and I do a bit of motion testing. And in fact, it's actually looking really clear. I'm not seeing a ton of motion blur as I slow down and move left to right, left to right. And even as I take some quick steps towards my opponents and take them down, I pause in the middle like here facing this guy. He doesn't even notice I'm here, but there's no ghosting to be found. And even here, I'm tracking these, these guys down. I'm running around the map. I'm just taking them out left and right. And this guy comes running up on me, full dead sprint, both of us. And I see him first and I pull up my gun, aim down sights. And as I pause, there's a teeny bit of motion blur here, but this is an effect produced by the game. As I lock on a target, you can see you can make out his entire body, his character. And I'm able to get the jump on him. And there we are, I take him out, I back out a little bit, and it's still looking fantastic. After taking out those two guys, I go up onto the ledge, round the corner, and right around the corner is his buddy. And I literally slid into this shot, and I pause mid-frame, 
no tearing, no ghosting, no artifacting. It's looking really good. And that's the story. Even as I go around the map destroying this guy with his katana, like he was actually going to do some damage with that thing. I noticed the same experience in Vanguard. It was entirely different than Warzone. It's optimized slightly differently and it, you, it worked to my advantage here with this Samsung G50A. Now, for those of you who don't use an RTX card, maybe you're looking at this because it has FreeSync Premium. And absolutely, that's a good choice to be looking at this Samsung monitor for. Well, that's why I fired up the RX 5700 XT and played a couple rounds of Vanguard just to see how well it compares to something like the RTX 3090 and the G-Sync compatibility that this monitor has. So let's check it out, you guys. I've got a couple interactions here that we should dissect. This one being the first, I'm throwing out myself a stun grenade and I'm gonna take a couple shots at this guy. I pause in the middle of the interaction. So far it's looking good. No motion blur or tearing. I'm still able to get the kill and take him out even though it's a bit dark. And even some up close interactions here. I'm chasing this guy down. I've been running after him for a while here and I turn the corner and he's being real squirrely going back and forth, back and forth. He doesn't even see me. But I pause on the interaction and even though it's a bit dark because of the map, I can still make out his character fully. And even as he turns to see me facing him, taking him out, there's only a very slight bit of motion blur happening. You can see it up in the head. There's a bit of shadow from the hood that this opponent is wearing. But this one says everything. Like this interaction here is textbook. This guy sees me from the corner of his eye and he doubles back. He makes that double back move that people do in this game. And uh, I know that's about to happen. So I'm still in hip fire chasing him down. And he turns that corner as I'm sprinting. And I pause in the middle of that. Crystal clean, you guys. Maybe there's a teeny bit of uh, motion blur out towards the edges of the display, but front and center, his character, body shots through and through while I'm hip firing, you can even see my gunfire. His character is outlined perfectly. You can see the clothing perfectly. You can just make out all that detail. Okay, so we've done some FPS games and it's about dang time to see how well this thing performs with HDR in games like Metro Exodus Enhanced. But I do have a new one coming up for you that I'm just getting into. And right after this, we're gonna be talking about Elden Ring. So let's jump in on a bit of Metro Exodus Enhanced Let's check out the color contrast, the brightness, the clarity, everything that this monitor can bring to the table when it comes to games like this. Now, as I said before, the backlight bleed was actually almost non-existent. The black level performance seemed to do really well. And with that peak brightness being a little bit brighter than they advertise, it actually comes in handy on a game like this. If we look up at the clouds, they just look very real. They're, they're tumbling in real life. We're getting good quality out of the water itself. It's not too dark. We've seen other monitors crush the details in shadow areas, unlike this monitor. It's not doing that. So if you are gonna use non-HDR in games like this, you really kind of have to tune in that contrast and kind of like I'm doing here, it's going to pull down that brightness level for you. This game again is optimized for HDR and ray tracing and all of that good stuff. But that's the beauty of this monitor is when you move out of HDR, you get a full calibration suite that is one of the most robust next to the Gigabyte series of monitors that I've recently reviewed, like the M32Q, the M28U, things like that. And even when we look at HDR dynamic versus standard, the dynamic does add that extra pop. So what I will end by saying is that the HDR makes an impact in games like this, but in other games, I didn't see as big of a difference. All right, so I imagine I'm gonna get some comments that are like praising this game and some that are like screaming because they're frustrated. There has been a lot of bugs in Elden Ring. I know, I downloaded the game, I really had to dial in my settings, I had to switch from the controller setup to the keyboard and mouse, and then I had to figure out how to get my resolution to display properly and do all this funky stuff, then I had to figure out the keys and, and the controls and everything like that. Yes, it was a bit of a pain, don't get me wrong. But once I did get it dialed in, this was like my second playthrough here, second sit down on this game, I turned that HDR on. And let me tell you, that opening map is fantastic. I mean, the color that you get, the greens, the grays, the ambers, the blue, 
they pull themselves out. And that tree that you see that's golden, it's beautiful. I mean, the line detail work in the game is actually extremely good. And this monitor, because of that extra level of brightness, actually gives it a good pop. Now, I will mention that it can be a bit oversaturated. And that's where you'd want to go into that color calibration while you're in HDR and pull back or pull up some of those colors, which I actually did. I pulled out some of the greens and I turned down some of the blues. And that helped me a lot in this game. Now, the game itself is a bit glitchy when you actually turn the angle of your camera. So it's not the monitor itself having any stutter if you're watching. And it's a well-known fact about Elden Ring and something they need to fix. But the gameplay was extremely smooth and the quality of the picture to me was impressive. I mean, I don't know that, like the only other game that I've played that had this level of graphic quality was Metro Exodus. And now this kind of matches up par for par for me. And on this monitor, it did a great job. You know, again, the color accuracy turned out extremely well. The detail, the pixel density, the fact that there wasn't any IPS glow. You didn't see it. it. It was non-existent in this game and it can get a little dark from time to time. The whole entry scene on this game is a very dark cave slash cav cavern that you're in. And I don't see any backlight bleed or blooming or anything like that. That's far more than what can be said about even the G70A. Now, it is par for par when it comes to some of the more recent monitors I've reviewed, like the M32Q from Gigabyte, um, the Artemis 323 CQR, but there's some good things about it that actually do better and some things that aren't so good. So let's talk about the downsides, you guys. Let's talk about the upsides, and then I'll let you know if this is something I recommend or not. So let's get those downsides out of the way. And of course, the first is gonna be related to that motion blur. I think it has a lot to do with the pixel response rate not being the best. I think they didn't dial in this technology as well as they could have. And it definitely doesn't stack up to some of the previous generations that Samsung offers. The second is the fact that even though this is a bright monitor, it doesn't offer the local dimming, which would just add and elevate the display quite a bit. And third, you know, I'm just being kind of a snob and an elitist when it comes to Samsung. And it's the fact that with this following suit from previous generations, it does not have 240 Hertz. It has a standard 165, which gets beat out by LG's GP850, 180 Hertz. Why not go the step further and try to match up the previous generations that you have and make it better? 240 Hertz, in my opinion, on this monitor, this thing would be screaming in one of my favorite go-tos, but it's not. And again, that's me being a bit of a snob when it comes to Samsung in their like five series or 50 series monitors. Okay, now I do have some really good specs that I think stand out above other monitors. And that includes some of the more recent monitors I've reviewed. And the first is going to be the black level performance in that IPS glow slash lack thereof. It did extremely well in these tests. You guys saw that. And when looking for a gaming monitor that has features like this that you might use in like a story-based game or a darker game, that is absolutely crucial to have. So if that's you, then highly consider this monitor, especially considering it is also a very good cost. Now, the second upside, in my opinion, is the fact that for the level of monitor that it is, it has some really good calibration menus. You know, with Samsung's G3, I was very disappointed. Their calibration menus were not great. Now, for a cheap budget monitor, I totally get it. But when you pay $449 MSRP, this is exactly what you should expect. The calibration menus are robust enough for you to do everything you want and calibrate to your liking. Now, the third, but arguably the most important is the fact that this is fully capable of handling FreeSync Premium and G-Sync. So whether you're a PC or a console user, AMD or Nvidia user, or whether you plan to switch in the future, you can buy this monitor and rest easy. So now that we've just gone through all of that, you guys, obviously I have to be able to give you my experience and tell you whether or not this is a monitor I would recommend. And the truth is that it would vary. 
Now, a couple of things that I do like. I like the fact that it's $449 and actually on sale at the time of making this video for $349. It tells me it's gonna go on sale quite often. And at $349, I'm not sure there's a monitor on the market that will beat this out clearly or be miles better. But other than that, I actually like the Gigabyte M27Q and M32Q a bit better. So if that's what you need and you need G-Sync and you want a good 1440p monitor and you play story-based games and you don't want that IPS glow and you want good black level performance and a bit of HDR just to wrap it all up, then yes, this is a monitor I would recommend. But if you're comparing between something like the LG GP850, the Gigabyte M32 or M27Q and this, I would probably choose those two monitors 96% of the time over this one in almost any scenario. Okay, you guys, I've said enough. You've listened to me rant for the last 20 minutes or so, but I appreciate you doing that. And I hope this video was helpful. And if you did find it helpful, go ahead and hit that like button underneath the video. Go check out the home channel. I've got tons of videos, tons of playlists on other monitors, even the ones I referenced in the video. And while you're there, hit subscribe. I am gonna be dropping a console review uh, video on the G50A here very, very soon. So make sure to stay tuned for that next video, you guys. Otherwise, up top here, I'm gonna be putting a playlist up. It's gonna showcase all of the 1440p monitors that I've reviewed, hopefully dated from most recent to the earliest, but sometimes that gets mixed up. So if you wanna see other 1440p monitor reviews, go ahead and click that playlist and it'll take you to every single one that I've done. Otherwise, you guys, I'll catch you on the next video.